Hey, it's Banks Halverson with High Gear Media. I'm joined here by Nelson Irison, Senior Editor with High Gear Media, and we're here today to talk to you uh, on behalf of Green Car Reports about diesels and hybrids. Uh, if you're out shopping for uh, a greener car, um, you're bound to consider both of these technologies. Each of these technologies have some very different strengths, though, and that's definitely worth touching on um, in a minute. But the reason why, why we're here probably this week talking about this is that earlier in the week, uh, there was a release from the Diesel Technology Forum, and that's a trade group that represents diesel manufacturers. Um, they released or rounded up data on which are the top states for diesels and which are the top states for hybrids. Uh, the um, interesting outcome from that, I thought, is that for, uh, for diesels, Texas, California, and Florida have the most diesels. Um, California, Texas, and Florida have the most hybrids wasn't surprising to me to see California on top for hybrids. Um, some of those other results, definitely, though, um, Florida especially. Um, did you see anything interesting on those lists, Nelson? Yeah, um, and really the, the Texas thing wasn't so surprising to me, or Florida for that matter. Both states are fairly large, uh, Texas especially. So long distances for daily commutes, long distances for daily errands, either car is going to be suitable in that scenario, especially diesels for the highway stretches faced in the, the larger states. Um, but yeah, it, there's also the sort of confluence of a lack of public transportation across the sunnier parts of the, the, the United States, uh, perhaps because the roads are always clear and people can always use them to get where they're going. Uh, so maybe it's not so surprising that that's where these high mileage vehicles end up. Um, the the um, definitely interesting. The the wild card in these results to me seemed to be um, what was mentioned a little farther down is that you know diesel pickup trucks are always big in the West. Um, the idea of having the the ranch truck be a diesel is for some some reason something very regional. Um, to the west states, you know, you don't have the farm trucks or the ranch trucks in the in the eastern states. At least from what I perceive, um, the diesels quite as much. Um, and I don't know if that relates to the cost of diesel or if it's something cultural or related to the distances that people would would drive their trucks. Um, diesels. Well, personally. living where I do, uh, yeah. sort of on the border between the south and the west. Uh, well, yeah south and the Midwest at any rate. Uh, it's definitely cultural, right? Big diesel truck means big heavy equipment. It doesn't mean, you know, a typical pickup. Uh, there's sort of a, a line drawn there. But also, people who have diesel pickups are often very proud of the range their trucks can, can manage because some of the trucks with the extended gas tanks or fuel tanks can manage, you know, 800, 1,000 miles even if they're only getting 18, 20 miles per gallon on the highway. Uh, and it, I, I don't really know why, but that often becomes a, a bragging point, almost as much as the black smoke they can shoot from the tailpipes when they've retuned them to produce 900 pound-feet of torque. <laughs> um, so uh, let's let's try to make sense of this data. It, it, to to me, in the end, um, this this data seems to be skewed pretty heavily by the presence of you know, heavy-duty pickups. Let's bring this back to the passenger car market, to uh, crossovers, to light trucks, um, vans, SUVs. What kind of difference is it going to to make to um, to shoppers um, to 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 choose a diesel instead of a gasoline vehicle? Um, there are so many more choices in the market uh, as far as diesels this year. Uh, versus just two or three years ago. Um, it's not just luxury automakers. Um, you know, VW has has uh, has had so many diesels out there for years. Um, they seem to be relentless 
in their charge to put diesels in cars. Audi suddenly has um, virtually their entire model line offering diesels. Uh, Mercedes-Benz has several models. BMW has several models. Um, Jeep. Uh, we we and then and then there's the the Ram 1500 uh, is is just starting to offer a light duty diesel. Um, we've got lots of choices. Um, but I think the point, the point to underline for car shoppers and what to remember is if you're thinking about a diesel and you're thinking about a hybrid, uh, go diesel if you do a lot of highway driving, right? Absolutely. Uh, the taller gearing, the, just the, the low RPM torque of the diesel ends up working out to extremely good fuel efficiency when you're on the highway. Uh, it doesn't always pay off necessarily as much if you're mostly slogging around town, e even at you know suburban type commute speeds, where you've got lots of uh, stops and then reaccelerations, um, where of course the hybrid shines. Yep, yep, and and yeah, diesels um, from our experiences, and and we've driven a lot of diesel cars over the years. Uh, you really need to get diesels up to their peak operating temperature before they start returning uh, those dividends and fuel economy. Uh, the problem is they take, diesels take longer to warm up, so if you take, uh, if you do mostly short trips around town, and I've, I've told a number of people this, if, if, you, if you do only short trips, uh, you're just not going to see those great numbers with diesels, but as soon as you're out on the highway, wow. Um, you know, most diesels at the speeds at real American highway speeds, which is, you know, higher, somewhat more aggressive than the EPA tests, you're probably going to be able to beat those EPA tests on, out on the highway. And that's what I saw this past week. I had a 2015 uh, VW Golf GTI, or, or not GTI, TDI. It felt almost like a GTI. Uh, because there's so much torque, and with the manual transmission, it's just a lot of fun to drive. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I wound out the engine up to its 5,000 RPM top end once, just to see what it was like. But you really don't need to. Uh, all week, I kind of, you know, raced through the gears and kept the revs down and and accelerated very quickly, but didn't waste revs. And I ended up with 49 miles per gallon average over something like 250 miles. It, uh, it's incredible, and and it would be any hybrid on the market driven in that same way. Easily and absolutely. I mean, a lot of Prius real world owner reports are in the mid 30s. You know, and it's precise. They drive it just like you drove the the Golf diesel. Uh, you know, kind of taking off from st uh, stoplights, f keeping up with traffic you know, running them just like we drive any other normal car, but that doesn't exactly fit the EPA model that gives the, the Prius its 50-plus gas mileage ratings uh, at the top end. So, yeah, I mean, real-world usage, There's it's really hard to beat for every use case except for that frequent short trip scenario you outlined. You know, it's really hard to beat a fairly compact diesel car. Uh, it's just... Uh, a brilliant package, especially when you add in the, the functionality of a hatchback, even though Americans don't tend to opt for the ha hatchback over the sedan option when it's available. Mm -mm. Yeah, and, and, and you know, that's what, uh, that's what the, the Golf TDI ends up, it ends up feeling like because you have all this torque, uh, it ends up feeling like this sort of almost no compromises muscle car in some way. You know, you, you, you drive it a little bit like there's a big V8 under the hood uh, and, and uh, you know, you're, you're getting 40-some miles per gallon and this thing has great hatchback practicality and only costs something like $23,000. Um, so it's, you know, they're, they're basically... You'll you'll get your money back most likely, um, if especially if you're one of those longer distance commuters. Uh, what we're seeing on the short distance in the short distance city driving is that uh, some of these diesels that offer stop start systems like um, the Mercedes Benz, um, the the GLK, 
uh, the Mercedes-Benz uh, E250 Bluetech, um, which I was in a, a couple couple months ago, um, they'll stop the engine when you're at stoplights, and so this sort of another common American driving pattern, which is the the high-speed boulevards, you know, 45, 50 mile an hour boulevards with the stoplights every half a mile or quarter mile, um, you can really uh, recoup. Some of some of that that fuel wasted idling, um, and uh, and and get get better efficiency from the diesels in that situation too. Um, so they're still not still not the best bet for for close around town driving. Um, for those kinds of driving, you should definitely go hybrid still. Um, and I've I've told people that who who drive only maybe <laughs> three to five miles a pop, um, if if you uh, if you go those short distances, consider a hybrid. Maybe even consider a plug-in hybrid, um, be because uh, you, you know then you're just wasting too much fuel trying to bring that engine up to operating temperature. Well, and I, I was wondering too about the uh, stop-start with the diesel. If that doesn't even exacerbate the whole waiting to get up to operating temperature if you're not using it in a scenario where it's got at least a five or ten minute stretch at speed to you know acquire that temperature to heat up all of that massive volume of oil and the generally heavy blocks that you know these engines are, are built around yeah yeah a lot of those start st stop start systems won't even uh, won't even think about uh, activating and turning off the engine for 15 20 minutes you know if the weather's weather is cooler um, I was surprised the um, Mercedes system seemed a little more aggressive. Where after running for just ten minutes, um, it would it would shut off the engine at at stoplights. So you know, if you were to buy a diesel with the start stop system, hoping to get that benefit on shorter runs around town, you might not even see it activate, and you're still facing the problem of lower fuel efficiency because you're waiting for the engine to heat up. Yep. Um, which, as you pointed out, is a perfect use case for a plug-in hybrid. And those are beginning to become a bit more popular, although they're still pretty limited, especially in the mainstream realm. Uh, but if you're only going three to five miles at a time, say three or four times a day, that's well within the range of even the smaller battery capacity plug-in hybrids on the market. And then you're not using any gas at all. You're just, you've effectively got an electric car for your own use case. That's right. And, and you know, if... If you drive mostly short distances, we definitely recommend that you check. Uh, we have fuel efficiency drive reports for so many vehicles up at Green Car Reports, and we recommend that you read those because not every vehicle with the hybrid badge uh, is going to deliver that great fuel econ economy on short trips. Um, for instance, right now I'm driving a, a 2014 uh, Subaru Crosstrek hybrid, and it's 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 a full hybrid officially in that the, the electric motor system will um, drive it very gently up to about 25 miles an hour, but uh, most of the time it the electric system functions as a mild hybrid, meaning that it just gives the gasoline engine an extra extra nudge when uh, when it could benefit from that and recoups from s some energy when you're coasting or, or braking. Uh, unfortunately, what it amounts to is um, maybe just a couple extra miles per gallon around town and no real advantage whatsoever on the highway. Um, just unfortunately, with mostly highway driving so far, I'm only averaging about 26. Uh, and I think the ratings are something like 29 city, 30, 32, 33 highway. Um, but uh, we'll see. I'll put some more miles on it this week, and and I hope to bring the average up. Maybe maybe we'll uh, do an urban loop with it and see if if you can stay mostly in, you know, within that electric range. If you can do better. <laughs> Well, you, that raises an interesting point, too, or a question at least. Uh, you mentioned earlier that the diesel, especially an example like the Golf, which is really affordable, uh, could very quickly pay itself back on fuel savings. Uh, but these mild hybrids, which often cost several thousand dollars or more, more than their regular purely gasoline counterparts, um, and then may not in the real world return such great gas mileage, 
there's a good chance that they're not actually going to save you any money even though you're saving a little bit of money at the pump you're giving it back every month in your car payment yeah yeah um and so so think so for for shoppers think about your needs if you're only covering short distances uh most days probably go hybrid if you're a longer distance commuter uh and and you cover 20 30 miles a day if you if you drive more on the freeways uh diesel might just pay off um those are those are some some good starting points um and uh you know, do typical driving styles in these states reflect reflect where diesels and hybrids are are, are stronger? No, I, I think this I, I think this data is is really skewed by by trucks and diesel trucks and commercial vehicles. So it's it's not really anything to go by at this time. Um, we're seeing a lot, lot of fragmentation uh, in in the green car market. So just think about your needs, read the, the drive reports for all these vehicles, and stay reading green car reports. Thanks a lot for joining us. Thanks.